Welcome to our channel Coin Lady, where we discuss recent developments in the XRP ecosystem and the wider cryptocurrency industry. What motivated Forbes to remove the piece on SEC's preferential treatment of Ripple? Also, the Forbes senior contributor filed a motion to disclose Inman's files for what reason exactly? In conclusion, we will examine Ripple CTO David Schwartz's thoughts on the most recent XRP and FTX marketplace innovation. Unfortunately, an article by Forbes senior contributor and tech policy expert dubbed it. Rosalind Layton that criticized the SEC's perceived unfair treatment of Ripple's blockchain-based payment system has been mysteriously removed. An editor's note has been added as a pop-up blocking access to the article why the SECC treats Ripple and Ethereum differently. The content on this page is no longer available. However, the crypto neophyte was able to read the article thanks to screenshots shared by members of the XRP community who revealed that the article is still viewable in reader mode on selected browsers. Dr. Leading questions in his article why the SEC treats Ripple and XRP differently while giving Ethereum a pass on the controversial 2018 Bill Hinman speech. The regulator claims that this speech provides sufficient guidance for the emerging industry. The policy researcher who describes this as a potential inconsistency in regulations expresses that the rub could lie in the hotly contested Hinman documents. Some of the materials referred to in the Hinman documents are emails and other correspondence that were created during the process of writing the contentious address. Importantly, the SEC's case against Ripple eventually centered on the speech, despite the agency's initial resistance to Ripple's requests for access to the documents. After initially resisting six court orders, the SEC eventually provided the documents to Ripple in October, but the agency is now seeking to keep the documents sealed via omnibus motions filed in December. It rehashed the argument that these discussions are protected by attorney-client privilege and added that making them public could hinder future policy deliberations by agency officials. As Dr. Layton points out in her article, the SEC's argument isn't easy to buy if you consider that the agency claims to be providing guidance for the developing market. She argues that these records could shed light on whether or not the free pass given to Ethereum was motivated by Heman's alleged conflict of interest, or whether or not regulator confusion justifies participant confusion in the industry and Ripple's fair notice defense. As a result, she has filed a motion asking the court to unseal the documents, as was reported today. It comes as no surprise that the XRP community is outraged that Forbes appears to have removed the article. The law office of John Deaton, who was quoted in the article about the Forbes contributor's lawsuit, was shocked by the news and expressed their surprise in writing. In the meantime, Forbes has previously removed an article by the tech policy contributor. In the previous case, however, the author did express a desire to make revisions to the work. Neither Dr. Leighton nor Forbes have responded to our requests for comment as of yet. If additional information becomes available, however, the Crypto Basic will revise this report. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable push notifications to be among the first to know about any breaking news pertaining to XRP. The motion for access to drafts of William Hinton's controversial speech from 2018 was filed yesterday on behalf of Leighton by attorney Kyle Seary. Through her legal representation, Leighton has objected to a recent motion filed by the Securities and Exchange Commission to seal documents related to Hanlon's speech. As a refresher, on December 22 and 2022, the SEC requested to seal some documents related to him in a speech document offered in support of its summary judgment motion. Some of the documents cited by Ripple in its opposition were given to the SEC by Hinton as part of the SEC's request to seal some of his controversial speeches. Although she has no financial interest in XRP or Ripple, Forbes senior contributor Layden has written extensively about the documents and their significance in the lawsuit, so she is opposed to the SEC's motion. In light of this, she humbly asks to be allowed to intervene in the case so that she can potentially ask the court to reject the SEC's motion to keep these records confidential and order their release to the public. The motion was summarized in part. In this context, it's worth noting that Leighton has written extensively in the opinion section of newspapers and magazines criticizing the SEC for using its regulatory authority to pick winners and losers in the cryptocurrency market. As the trial of the century for cryptocurrencies, Leighton has written multiple articles on the ongoing Ripple lawsuit. 
Several hours later, she published a hit piece criticizing the SECC for, as many had predicted, treating Ripple and Ethereum differently. This was prompted by the motion. The Forbes staff removed the article quickly. The cryptocurrency community has buried responses to Layton's motion. On Twitter, Pro XRP attorney John Deaton expressed his appreciation for Siri and Layton's motion to open up human documents to the public. Hyman has emails and other SEC internal communications related to the 2018 speech draft that caused a stir when it was delivered by Inman. However, the public still hasn't been given access to the documents, even though the SEC gave them to Ripple in October. Attorney Deaton gave an explanation for the documents withholding from the public last year. Deaton claims there is a gag order on the papers. We in an effort to prevent any disclosure of the contents by the parties involved. Here is David Schwartz's take on the newest feature added to XRP. If you want to be the first to know about breaking news and other breaking updates, please subscribe to our channel and enable notifications. Yesterday, David Schwartz, CTO of Ripple, gave the thumbs up to the marketplace XRP Cafe, which uses the XRP ledger for NFT transactions. It occurred as the market reported hitting several key goals in the days prior. There is only one of each of these points of interest, support for IPS, minting pages, XRP, and FTX Mentor. To emphasize, one of one NFTs are limited to only one copy. That being the case, it is not a collectible and is also unique. The abbreviation IPS stands for Interplanetary File System. It's a place to keep track of the ownership of NEF data that's been stored off-chain, meaning that any disagreements about who owns what can be settled with a simple reference. More than half of all XRP and FTX sales by volume this week and the most NFTs sold by sheer numbers this month were transacted on the NFTs marketplace, according to data shared by Biscoff. Bitstamp's data shows that as of press time, it has handled 55.8% of this week's NFTS sales volume, with 3,863 NFTS sold this month second only to XRP. Schwartz reacted to the news by writing awesome and quoting the tweet from XRP Cafe. In January, the project received $100,000 in XRP grants, which is worth noting. Others who have commented on the development have credited the positive community atmosphere for the recent successes. In October of 2017, NFTS launched their XRP trading platform. Despite arriving late to the game, the network has some distinct advantages, NFTS are more secure, less likely to cause network congestion, and cheaper because they don't rely on smart contracts. Because of this, XRP and FTS have gained a lot of popularity in a short amount of time, with trade volume exceeding 10 million XRP by the end of the year. To complement the XL's 20 standard and make NFTS easier to use on the network, developers have recently proposed a lighter weight in FTX standard. CEO, on the other hand, criticizes XRP and Cardano. Can it be said that there is no value in them? According to financial data providers CEO, Lee Drugin has attacked XRP and Cardano, two of the top 10 cryptocurrencies, calling them completely and utterly useless. Drugin recently tweeted that Bitcoin and Ethereum were completely, utterly useless and that their market share would shift to assets that actually work in matter in the next market cycle. According to a tweet by user Drugin, there is currently a total of $20 billion and $14 billion in market cap stock in XRP and Cardano, respectively. The analyst remarked that funding of this sort would inevitably be redirected to stuff that actually works in matters in the next funding cycle. Investors in XRP and Cardano, 6th and 7th in terms of market capitalization, respectively should heed Julian's tweet as a warning. Ripple, a blockchain company, has formed partnerships with major financial institutions, and their token is XRP. Cardano is a proof-of-stake protocol often referred to as the Japanese Ethereum, and its native token is called Cardano. Both cryptocurrencies enjoy a cult-like following and have drawn the ire of well-known figures like crypto tycoon Mike Novogratz. Drugin thinks XRP and Cardano are overvalued and will lose market share despite their current prominence. Could you say that you agree with this? The comments section awaits your feedback. This video has now concluded. Guys, if you like the video, click the like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified. 
See you in the next video. Bye.